Audrey, tell us a little bit more about Peacock Fest. Yeah, so Peacock Fest officially started on the 18th and goes through July 5th. And this was really our way of bringing Peacock content to you in a new way. So we're all missing a little bit of normalcy and things are starting to get back to normal. So we were thinking of summer concert festivals. And so we thought it'd be a really cool way to position this content. So you can think of the headliners at this festival as the big name shows and movies that everyone knows and loves. So your offices, Yellowstones, Harry Potter's, Matrix, uh, opening acts are all these amazing Peacock originals that are coming to you. Um, we Are Lady Parts is one of the newest one that I personally love, um, but there is Girls 5 Eva, which we've talked about, Vanderpump Dogs, Intelligence, The Amber Ruffin Show. Um, there's a ton of great ones and always coming out. Dr. Death will be a new one when that comes out. And then uh, The Encores. These are like your timeless, timeless classics that everyone can just go back to your um, Frasers, your Murder, She Wrote, your Everybody Loves Raymond's, um, Law and Order SVU. Um, so that was the idea with Peacock Fest. And we just thought it was a really fun way to kind of bring the festival to you through your television. Um, and yeah, we hope everyone loves it. It was really fun. So I think we each put together our own opening act headliner and encore mm -hmm. mini Peacock Fest. Um, Audrey, did you want to st start with that? Yeah, sure. So David said, we all took a stab at putting together our own personal Peacock Fest. So my opening act would be We Are Lady Parts. I mentioned this is an all-girl Muslim punk band show um, that is just really unlike anything else that's on TV right now. It's super fun. The music is awesome. Like as a teen punk slash goth, um, this music really speaks to that part of my soul. Um, so I just really loved it. It was super, super fun. Um, the headliner would have to be Saturday Night Live for me. Peacock has 46 seasons of Saturday Night Live, which is just crazy that it's been on that long and you can watch them all on Peacock. And then my encore, this is a little bit of a deep cut. Um, like Scott mentioned earlier, I think Peacock has a ton of movies, like library movies that you wouldn't necessarily think of. And Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds is a classic and probably the reason why I'm terrified of winged objects to this day. Um, but I really think these are three strong picks for my own personal Peacock Fest. Um, so that's what I picked. Audrey, I think every time we Thoughts? talk about your your goth phase, you promise to send mm -hmm. photos of you in your in your Jenko jeans, and it never uh, happens. And I really I know. need it in my life. Please do with your I ICP face I... makeup. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that. It was more skater punk than it was like ICP insane clown posse <laughs> for those maybe not in the know. Um, but I'll try. I'll try. There was dark lipstick. There were like ball chain chokers. There was like flat ironed silver hair. Um, it was, it was a look, um, but I'll try. Can't even, I can't um, even imagine it. <laughs> Seriously. Like, I really can't. It was fun. There's like, there's a um, great meme out there for like about Jenko jeans where it shows someone who's like jeans are like wet halfway up to their knees because the jeans dragged in the, in the snow in the winter and just ugh. soaked up water. And uh, I, re I remember, like, I clearly remember the names of the kids in high school that always had, like, wet pant legs. Yeah, and the whole back was all tattered, and there were just, like, strings hanging because you just walked over it with your sneaker back and drug it along the asphalt. But that just made it cooler. Right? It was a vibe, oh, you know? You know? <laughs> oh. They're slowly coming back. Like, wide leg jeans are coming back. Skinny jeans are going out. Well, so I'm told mm -hmm. the kids say these days, but it's only a matter of time before Jenkos are back. Yeah. Oh, uh, one can okay. hope. <laughs> Who's festivaling next? Uh, I believe I am festivaling next. And okay. uh, my yes. my uh, my opening act is the Office Superfan episodes exclusively on Peacock. Um, I'm an Office super fan. I've seen the entire series the entire way through at least a dozen times, like seriously a dozen times, episode one to the finale. So when Peacock released these extended episodes featuring deleted scenes, I was absolutely ecstatic. 
Um, because who would have thought that we'd get to see new Michael Scott content 16 years after the series finale? Um, so far, Peacock has released extended super fan episodes for seasons one and three. So you can see even more of Amy Adams as the purse girl in the hot girl episode, more prison Mike in the convict episode, uh, and more of Phyllis's wedding to Bob Vance of Vance Refrigeration. Uh, my headliner is, no surprise, the July 18th WWE event, Money in the Bank. Uh, we know a few matches so far, including WWE Raw Women's Champion Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair and WWE Champion Bobby Lashley versus Kofi Kingston. Um, but the main events of the night are the Money in the Bank ladder matches. The idea is simple. Seven WWE superstars enter the ring. There's a briefcase containing a world title match contract hanging above the ring. And the first superstar to climb the ladder and grab the briefcase gets a WWE title shot anytime, anywhere of their choosing. Um, so there's one match for the men and one match for the women. And it's typically a very physical and dangerous affair. Um, but it's one of the best gimmick matches uh, of the entire year for WWE. Um, so check that out on the WWE Network on Peacock. Uh, and my encore is the 1988 John Carpenter classic, They Live, starring late pro wrestling superstar Rowdy Roddy Piper and Keith David, who have one of the best on-screen fist fights of all time ever filmed on the screen. Uh, Piper plays a drifter named Nada, who uses a magical pair of sunglasses to locate and eliminate aliens disguised as humans. And Nada does not mess around. He's here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and he's all out of bubble gum. Uh, so those that's my festival lineup uh, for Peacock Fest. <clears throat> Any questions? Wow. <laughs> no, oh, I love it. So I love it. <laughs> it's really crazy given like all the really, really amazing, I mean, all the amazing horror movies John Carpenter has made and like they live is more um, is more heavy on the social commentary than I think some of his other movies are, but like still like stands the test of time and speaks to consumerism. And uh, it, it's, it's just so good even now. The description of that movie is just superb. Yeah, David did an excellent um, job, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Uh, Scott, now you have so much to live up to um, with, your, uh, with your uh, lineup. So please tell us about it. Why do I feel like my, my tour or music tour is not going to be as good as yours? Um, here we go. Opening act, the new Saved by the Bell. Um, honestly, I think this one surprised all of us, like how ballsy to reboot such an iconic and beloved franchise, uh, especially on what was at the time like a relatively young streaming service. Um, but as someone who watched the original series, I can say with confidence that it certainly sucked the landing and I think you guys liked it as well. Um, plus, you know, as someone who is regularly watching LGBTQ content, it's great to see that Josie Toda is one of the main characters and is openly trans with her character. Um, so I love to see that Peacock kind of is continuing to really lean into representing the community in such a positive light in all of its original series. So definitely check out that one if you haven't already. Um, in terms of a headliner, I've got Parks and Recreation. I mean, who doesn't love Parks and Recreation? Um, for those who have been living under a rock, Parks and Rec is a comedy about government workers in Pawnee, Indiana. Um, sounds riveting, right? What's not to love? Government workers? I mean, clearly there's a market for it because like we had a reality show here about the Philadelphia Parking Authority and that was popular, so. I mean, this is better. And I think part of it is because these characters are so relatable. There's like little bits of all of them that we can kind of like find in ourselves. So love that one, stands the test of time. All of it's available on Peacock exclusively. So check that out now. And then in terms of an encore, put in the classic Jurassic Park. I mean, has there ever been a more iconic movie moment than when Sam Neill's character falls asleep on an airplane only to wake up to a velociraptor in the chair next to him being like, Alan, like, <laughs> come on, like, <laughs> like, totally came out of left field. And like, to this day, I still can't meet someone with the name Alan and not like, like, Alan. <laughs> like, it's just too much. It's too much. So I actively avoid people named Alan now, because of this film. Um, 
But Jurassic Park, I think, as everybody knows, is one of those few movies that is family friendly ish, but is also super tense and can be scary at times. And I think it's a difficult line to straddle, um, but it's done so well. And that sort of explains why it's a classic. So, yeah, those are my picks. Thoughts, feelings, concerns. Alan. Um, it's it's not fair that you had to it's not fair that you had to do your Alan stuff while alone on the screen because we were laughing, but yeah. for anyone who allegedly. doesn't know, allegedly you were, you were just doing we that to no audience response. It's okay. I can laugh at my own jokes. I'm fine. <laughs> um, um I love Jurassic Park, though. Like, I remember seeing it in the drive-in movie theater, which, like, isn't really a thing anymore. I know David has more recently, like, than most of us have been to a drive-in. But, like, I haven't been to one since I was a kid. And that may have been the last movie I've seen at the drive-in. But, oh, God, I love Jurassic Park so much as a kid. So good. Yeah, I use the, um, while that's an iconic moment for you, I use the hand into the Triceratops poop uh, gif constantly. I'm not going to tell you the context of the of the times <laughs> that I use that, but I mean it that is... was definitely a follow up. Like, yeah. you can say that and yeah. then not say why what you're using it for because this is like going in all sorts of directions. Like, I mean, <laughs> also, I feel like we have like multiple group conversations and solo conversations on the reg, and I've never seen you use this. I would also like Agreed. to know what the circumstances Agreed. are. No, oh, clever well. girl. Okay. It's a little... Yeah, but also the 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 ah 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 is another that yeah. actually is iconic love. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I will also very quickly second your love for Saved by the Bell. I think we all really loved it, and we're honestly like kind of shocked by how good it was. And yeah. I'll say quickly, like the reason I love it so much is that um, whereas like Boy Meets or Girl Meets World and Fuller House like very much rely on, in my opinion the older stars to really like make you enjoy it. Like, honestly, I didn't care about Girl Meets World unless Corey and Topanga were on the screen. Um, but they they really established the new characters, built a world for them, made the characters feel three-dimensional and lived in. So you really cared about them and you didn't need to see Slater or Jesse on the screen to really enjoy the series. And that's why I thought it was so cool. 